Okay, hello everyone. My name is Ramin Ahmadi. I'm a SharePoint developer at Continent Code, and you can find uh, my contact information from here. And today, um, I'm going to show you how you can call Dynamics uh, 365 CRM APIs from a SharePoint Framework uh, web part. So let's jump uh, to the demo without uh, wasting time. So the demo itself uh, is really simple. I used uh, and design uh, to build this UI. It's a uh, React library, uh, uh, which has plenty of UI components you can explore from its uh, website. Uh, the ones I used is uh, the expandable table you can see here, which uh, returns uh, top 20, uh, top 20 uh, accounts from Dynamics CRM, uh, which has a pagination and by clicking on each row, you can see uh, uh, the related contacts to, to each account. And we have a search box at the top so that you can search and it returns data back from Dynamics CRM. So this is the web part, it's really simple. Um, so in terms of the properties, it has three properties. Uh, one is the uh, CRM instance URL, uh, URL uh, which uh, we can define here, and the app registration and the Azure function URL, uh, which I'm going to talk about these two later on. Uh, so let's jump to the code so I can show you some of the coolest stuff behind the scene. Uh, so we have uh, two two components here. I hope it's uh, large enough and you can see the code. So this is the uh, accounts components, uh, which using uh, uh, and design as uh, I mentioned, is the table uh, divider and search components. Uh, and by the way, I'm using uh, React hooks. I think uh, we are getting used to this uh, uh, approach, uh, and it's a really like. A uh, simple way of uh, building components and is more readable than uh, the classic way of uh, building components. Um, I have a table here uh, which just display the uh, accounts, uh, which has an expandable uh, property, which is uh, another component. And if you go to that component, it's just uh, uh, basically another table with four columns uh, displaying uh, the contacts, uh, the contacts information. Uh, and uh, when you click or select each row, it just uh, call get contacts from a service class, uh, which is a dynamic service, and uh, brings back the data uh, and display it to the user. But the takeaway from this sample is in the dynamic service class, uh, which I have a, a AAD token provider factory class here. Uh, so uh, AAD token provider factory uh, gives you the get get token provider class, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, get a token provider method. And by calling that, you can uh, get token for a resource. Uh, if you remember a few weeks ago, I uh, explained this for uh, building a Yammer part. So in this case, you can uh, get access to another resource. And when you get the token, you can use it to uh, call the API that you can uh, find here. For example, uh, we are getting contacts uh, by a filter, a filter that is a account ID, and also set the authorization header with the token we got uh, from the AAD token provider. And when user uh, try to search, you also uh, get the accounts uh, back from the dynamic CRM uh, by filtering uh, uh, the name. Uh, bear in mind that uh, you need also to uh, add the permissions to the SharePoint Online uh, Client Accessibility, uh, which is dynamic CRM, uh, and it has only one permission available. Is uh, it is a user impersonation? So this is uh, this is one way to uh, get the data back or calling uh, dynamic CRM. Uh, but um, uh, recently, we had a project that uh, client asked us to develop an Azure function for them instead of uh, using this approach. So, uh, as you can see, application permission is uh, permissions are not available here. So, how we can how can we um, 
pass the delegated permissions from the uh, uh, from the SharePoint web part to to the Azure function and pass it over to to Dynamics CRM to get the data back. So the answer is uh, using um, OS2 on behalf of Flow. Uh, that is a, a diagram for this I just uh, created for you guys. Uh, so this flow helps you to authorize uh, access from the gateway that is Azure function in our sample to the downstream APIs without losing trace of the uh, user. So um, we know that the user using our web part has already has uh, has been already authenticated. And also we know that when we use AAD HTTP client to access Azure AD protected APIs like Azure Functions, it attaches a bare JWT token uh, to the ongoing request. It means that internally uh, the AAD HTTP client implements the Azure AD OS uh, flow using ADL.js to obtain a valid access token. So here we have the access token uh, to get access to the Azure function. Uh, so from here, we need to uh, authenticate to Microsoft Identity uh, Platform token, uh, token Insurance Endpoint to request another token to get access to uh, Dynamics uh, 365 CRM. So it validates the credentials along with the Azure function and issues the access token uh, for Dynamics CRM. And uh, after obtaining the access token, we can set it in the authorization header of the request. And finally, when we get the uh, result back, we can pass it over to uh, uh, the SPFX web part to display it to the user. So um, if I want to show you uh, the code, so we know how to use the AAD HTTP client. Um, and in this sample, uh, I use uh, I use Azure Function as a middle tier uh, web API to call the uh, call the Dynamics CRM. Uh, as you can see here, we are calling that Azure Function with uh, uh, with a parameter which is instance URL. It, it, it is a Dynamics CRM instance uh, URL. Um, so it's passing the um, uh, passing the access token uh, to the Azure function, and it's, uh, it does it uh, behind the scenes, so we don't need to do anything about the, uh, the access token. And if we go to the Azure function code, first we get the uh, JW token from the authorization header, and also the instance URL, uh, which is our dynamic CRM uh, URL. Uh, we have a function. Uh, we have a function here. Uh, I'm using Microsoft.Client.Identity to um, get the token uh, by, uh, by building a client application using client ID, client secret, and uh, tenant ID, and also uh, the default uh, scope, uh, which is a built-in scope for every application that uh, refers to to the static list of permissions configured on the application registration. Uh, uh, as is so it only has a, a one permission, but it can be uh, multiple uh, permissions, and it returns uh, uh, all of them. And by calling uh, acquire token on behalf of, we can pass that uh, JW token, which is a user session, uh, and get the access token we need to get access to Dynamics uh, CRM. And then we can uh, uh, set that token to the authorization header. And then we can call uh, the call the API and get and if it returns any data back, uh, we can return it to the uh, to the web part. Uh, and uh, the, the Azure function itself is uh, secured with Azure Active Directory, so that this is a, this is a secured Azure function. And we also added Dynamics uh, CRM. Uh, in, in, into the permissions uh, for the for for this uh, Azure function, uh, which you you need to do that. Uh, otherwise, it's gonna uh, throw you uh, to an error uh, for uh, getting access to that resource. So I think I explain everything. Uh, so I'm gonna pass it or pass it to you. Pass it to you guys. All right. Ram, Ram, if, sorry, sorry, Patrick. If you don't mind, can you go back still to the UX just to recap on how it was working and and how it how it behaves? Sorry, Patrick, for jumping there. Just for those. Uh, yeah. So uh, this sample is mix of uh, using AAD token provider and also AAD HTTP client uh, for getting uh, the data uh, when you. Uh, 
first load the page is using a uh, HTTP client, um, which is here, get accounts. But after that, uh, if you start uh, searching or if you want to uh, get the contacts is using the AAD uh, HTTP client, uh, sorry, AAD uh, uh, token provider. Cool. Looking really good. Sorry, sorry, Patrick, I'm messing your flow, <laughs> jumping in. Now that I'm back, I'm messing your flow in this calls. Sorry for that. <laughs> Thanks, uh, you, Rami. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, Rami. Really great. Really stuff. cool stuff, awesome. Raman. Uh, really great stuff. The auth, the auth stuff is is always interesting to see how that works because uh, I know it can be tricky at times for sure. Mm -hmm.